at uh, 6.03 p.m. I'm sorry for uh, the delay, but we're having so much fun being <laughs> here together and live that um, we let time slip away. So if you would all please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And um, I'm going to have to call on uh, our esteemed attorney, Mr. Kavir, <laughs> to do the invocation uh, as uh, the one assigned couldn't make it this evening. Good evening. I just want to thank, uh, take a moment to thank you, Lord, for our great city, our great state, and our great country. Lord, I pray for wisdom for our president, our governor, and all the governors, and for all the, for all the leaders of our city. Please guide our decisions and protect our city and our health. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Who would take the uh, roll call, please? Okay, Councilman Blevin. Here. Councilman Schlack. Present. Councilman Valerius. Here. Councilman Seif. Here. Councilman Lloyd. Here. Pro Tem Lolly. Here. And Mayor McLeod. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. May I have a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? Motion, Mayor. Okay. Motion by Mr. Schlack. Second by Mr. Lolly. Any corrections? Changes? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion has carried. We have a motion for approval of the minutes for our regular meeting of March 23rd. Motion, motion by Mr. Valeria. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Any corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion has carried. Now we move on to organizational business. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just a couple of items to uh, bring you up to speed on here. Um, I feel like a, uh, a yo-yo when it <laughs> comes up to this subject. Uh, the Allen Road uh, Bridge over the Ecorse Creek at uh, by, by Thunder Bowl is closed again. Um, I, I was laughing because I pulled up last last month's uh, or last week Council Meetings agenda. It was open, and I think before that it might have been closed. And it's like every other week it's something different. The communication from Wayne County um, has been interesting to say the least, and. Uh, there's been some lack of it, and the mayor has been trying to uh, make that point to uh, the director Watts that that needs to improve, and we hear it, we just don't see it yet. But hopefully that'll be turned around here shortly. So as soon as we receive any updates, we'll post them up on the various Facebook pages and let you know as well, and, uh, and see what we, how we go from that point. So um, talking about Wayne County, they'll soon be repaving uh, Oakwood Boulevard. Um, I have down here from I-94 to Fairlane Drive. It's possible this may actually go to, from the DTI uh, Railroad Bridge, the uh, there at Melvindale Allen Park border, to uh, Fairlane Drive. Um, when they when it's all said and done, I had not get a chance to drive that area myself because the bridge is closed. I got to go the other way, um, but I'll I'll check that out. But Tom uh, kind of indicated it might be as far back as the uh, Robert Street in Melvindale. Uh, the Belmont water main replacement from Fox to Champaign continues. Uh, the contractor is, is RVP, and they're finishing uh, doing the, the uh, services right now, and they'll be doing uh, two tie-ins middle of next week, and then uh, they'll be ready to hand off that project to GV Cement. They'll come in and do the uh, concrete work and the restoration. Um, we're probably looking about three to four more weeks until we're uh, ready to finish that project up. Um, SOD's going to be probably the, the biggest issue to kind of delay us at the end there. Uh, but we'll get it you know, buttoned up here as quickly as we can. We, we know it's been a while for the residents. Apparently, I had one from a resident that was, a, it's been about a month or so, and uh, which is about the, the pace. They're, they're working their normal pace. It's not like they're taking any longer time, but there are steps in the process that they have to follow where they have to pressurize, uh, test the, uh, the, the, the water main. They have to also do the bacteria test, make sure it's safe to drink from, and those do take a little bit of time, so they will delay the project a little bit. So weather permitting, three to four weeks, we'll see how it is. I'll have an update at the next meeting for you. Um, the uh, program year 2020 CDBG block grant, uh, Kennedy Project, Kennedy Park Project, working with Wayne County Procurement, we had a meeting with them today, myself and uh, Pat Hawkins. Uh, they're gonna meet again on Friday to, over, to look over the bid. Uh, we only had one bidder, it was uh, 
Sinclair uh, Recreation. We're familiar with Sinclair. They've done the Humpty Dumpty Park. They've done um, Briar Rabbit. I believe they've also done um, Champaign and, and Millward and a couple other parks as well. So very familiar with them. Um, we're seeing where, where the numbers are at. They won't, let it, they won't release the, what the bid numbers were because they don't want that to taint the, the process. But when the uh, material is sent to you, it's not hard to find. I, I can do the math and Pat and myself did the math to, today. So we, we know where we're at. Um, budget wise, uh, we, we, we're, we have extra money in the uh, 2020 uh, allocation. I have some program income money uh, we may need to tap into and we may need to tap into some other additional funds as well. Uh, because uh, where, where they're at. Uh, now, the other process, uh, pro part of that program is we may actually pull a couple of the items out that Pat can actually do with his own labor and uh, save five or $6,000, which will, would help tremendously. <coughs> and uh, then for, uh, we have the budget to be distributed. Uh, let me get that from Amanda. Is she... As she's passing it out, I, I just have one more I want to talk about that I don't have on the agenda. Uh, we, we got notification that the, uh, the flower bed, adopt the flower bed program, we're kind of uh, having to take over. Uh, the court doesn't have the um, court services workers like they've had in the past. So um, we're looking at the, the program, and I don't know if they've had a really good budget in the past either. Uh, so the, the, the plots that they've had before were $100 and $200. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to go 175 and 275. Um, just, it's the cost that we have uh, when we roll in the watering, the maintenance, the flowers themselves, um, it's, it's, this will cover all of our costs. So I know we're gonna get a little bit of grief uh, back from some people, I, I anticipate that. I told uh, Cheryl McDonnell handles this for the, for the city. She does a wonderful job. She's very diligent. Um, I said, if there's an issue, please you know, have them call me. Um, I'll be happy to show them the budget. You know, there's no, there's, this is what, we're, what our, our expected costs are going to be. And we also uh, need to be able to, to have a, uh, 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 I have a little bit of contingency in that, in that budget to start buying some perennials. And she's gonna start trying to buy more perennials with the money that they normally allocate for flowers. So we can get away from the, the annuals in a ma massive amounts and we can get into putting in the, the perennials that'll come up on an annual, ba on a regular basis and then put the annuals in for that color. So. We're going to work with that. So if you hear any 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 uh, con concern, please call me if there's any questions. Um, but this is the the, the facts of the of the story that's uh, there. I, I also uh, worked with uh, Jennifer at the DDA. Um, we, <laughs> if if it hasn't been locked down, I I pretty much put a price to it now. I'm willing to to put a, a sponsorship to it. And uh, so the DDA is actually uh, taking over a couple of uh, boxes that are on Southfield Road uh, that they actually already maintained a little bit too. We're gonna to put a little bit of love to them as well, but uh, it's a way that we can help um, offset some other costs. If, it was, if we don't go that route, the cost probably would have been a lot more than we were already anticipating. Um, I'm not keen on seeing a $75 increase per box, but at the same time, the reality of the costs are, wh are what they are. So uh, Amanda has passed out the, uh, the, the draft budget. It's in a uh, really uh, loose format. Uh, we're going to be meeting next Tuesday uh, at 6 o'clock to go over that with you. Uh, questions and concerns, uh, uh, please, uh, if you have anything, let us know what they are. We'll get them ready to answer ahead of time if we can. If you have them at the night, then we'll be able to answer them as well. Um, one of the things I do want to have you, uh, uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, everybody here, effort, uh, fantastic uh, uh, people to work with. Department heads are, have been fantastic in working with this. Um, this is Amanda's first budget. I think she did a bang up job. It's uh, it, it well presented. And uh, you know, we've had uh, Bob be able to be here as well to help um, answer a couple questions and, and, and help set the dial maybe a little bit to, to go look at a different direction and some things. Um, one of the things that I would just point out uh, here for you so you're aware of it, you know, the, the, it balances out with a um, uh, hitting, as we take a, uh, um, some fund balance reserve to balance the budget. The reason for that, and I, and I do go through, and I think if you take the what she's given you, the numbers, and you take the letter that I've prepared with her and kind of read them hand in hand, they'll kind of make a little bit of sense. Um, the biggest issue on the, the difference in the, in the fund balance to revenue, uh, or the re revenue to expenses was the uh, uh, compensated absences being paid out. So we have a number of people retiring here in, uh, in the next fiscal year. 
those numbers are usually, we don't usually put those in the budget. They usually come at the end or just hit the fund balance at the end of the, at the, end of the, at the day, and they're not in the budget. This time we wanted to put them up front, so they're in the budget. So you see it right now that you're going to be paying those out, and I wanted to make sure you're, you're aware that that is uh, the main reason for the, the difference on the, uh, the two. One, one other thing I want you to flip, I have your flip to page, um, I have you flip to page four, and I'll just read this one here. April 2021, the city received notification from Wayne County Community Development Block Grant regarding being awarded a program year 2021 CDBG, alloc CDBG allocation of 104,000 for the historical house or the historical museum. Funding will be used for the address the potential exterior and interior lead-based paint uh, issues, repair damaged brick and mortar, and remove the enclosed porch. I say all the time, we throw something at the wall. We don't know if it's going to stick, and sometimes it sticks. And again, this one stuck for $104,000. Wow. That's awesome. So this was, I know you, you had some uh, little excitement last week when we mentioned that we put it in for the application, and that was a nice to be able to tell you that it was awarded. Uh, so we'll be working with uh, Wayne County CBG to get that um, information to them for the uh, bid specs and uh, be able to go from that part. Um, this will be a significant uh, impact for uh, what needs to be done at the house. This will not cover everything. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And uh, so, but this will help the, uh, the commission at least be able to move in the right direction of, of what they want to accomplish over there. So. Um, I, it, 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 as you go through the budget message, I, I really did outline everything we did. I was surprised at how much we got accomplished in the uh, last year, um, but I, I tried to do list that out. And then it does a touch on the uh, projects we have coming up in the next year. And, uh, and again, if you kind of read those hand in hand with her, uh, with uh, Amanda's um, uh, work on the uh, numbers, I think it'll kind of make a little bit more sense to you as you go through there. Thank you. Uh, before I ask the rest of the council members for any comments on, on the administrator's report. I'd like to just make a couple of comments myself with regard to the uh, adopt a flower bed program. Um, I think it was last year I had an email from Mayor Cuspa of Southgate who was inquiring about the flower beds program because a number of his uh, residents uh, going through Allen Park were very envious of our flower boxes and flower beds and wondered how we did that. And I put him in touch with Cheryl McDonald, Mac Mac McDonald uh, who was more than happy to pass along the information. Um, the other thing, um, I had some thoughts running through and maybe we can um, tap some of our friends locally as far as uh, providing some perennials. Um, there was one other thing, and I need to remember to write things down because they just come and go, but uh, it'll eventually come back. Probably wasn't that important. But I just wanted to let you know about the flower beds program, and it, it came to me if you talk long enough. Um, FYI, I have been working on reestablishing the Beautification Commission. I had uh, done various postings on Facebook and, and send out emails directly to people to, to garner interest, and I just want to let you all know that at next council meeting, I will be bringing to you uh, five appointees for the Beautification Commission, um, and uh, we will kickstart that program. I think um, in talking to one of the individuals who had looked at um, information on their responsibilities, he posited that um, some of this needs reworking because there's a ton of stuff that was written in the ordinance, I think, in 1957 that you really don't want and they don't want to be doing so I'm going to kind of get leave it up to them to to get together with legal affairs and talk about <laughs> what they'd like to be responsible for but I have five individuals who who are getting ready to start this and hopefully we'll get more and it's a very nice cross-section of people um, also getting back to working on student commissioners so we'll see what comes of that but um, yeah, now if there's any questions yeah, yes yeah, on the uh, adopt a flower bed program, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, I mentioned Cheryl, and she does a great job. But I got to mention, this has been a team effort from all the way, uh, you know, top to bottom here. Um, I got to thank Pat, because Pat had a watering trailer. It needed a little bit of re repairs. Sent it over to uh, to Roy at the at the yard, and uh, they salvaged a 
piece of equipment off of something else they had, save probably spending a couple thousand dollars to get it done for a couple hundred dollars or less. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to sneak a truck away from Matt Baker in the building department, for, <laughs> put a put a, uh, um, a hitch on it, and uh, uh, be able to have a truck. Although I did talk to Pat last year, yesterday at lunch, and we be able to grab a truck from him and swap something out there. So we're working on a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, you, I know when we talked before um, with advan with the GFL coming on board, Bob Graham was going to be out of work. Don't worry, I, got a, I found him a spot. He's going to be doing the watering, so he's actually going to be watering for us. And then the DDA was in looking that they may uh, want to acquire a watering trailer and a uh, gator, um, because we have all this going on now. We're going to share with them, and uh, and Bob's going to do their watering as well. So I, I think it's a really good. Uh, sign that you know just departments come together in uh, in this area. Wish we'd have had a little bit more time when we knew about it in the fall time and could have planned a little bit better. But in, a, in probably about a little less than about four, you know, probably about five weeks, six weeks, we've been able to come together and, and get this plan to, off the ground and ready to go. So, but it's it, everybody working together and uh, in there. So I, I, I also twisted uh, Pat's arm. He willingly said I could use some of his. Uh, uh, part-time labor to help plant. If anybody else wants to plant, mm -hmm. <laughs> he did, he did. He's, he may not remember though, but he did. Um, he, I just, I think I gotta buy a pizza and don't treat them like uh, prisoners or, or uh, jail people. So, but uh, it's, it is just a sign that everybody working together, it really does come together in this, you know, you know, the, it takes a village to, the statement really is true. But if anybody wants to come out on those date, planning days, I'll get those dates for you. We'll get everybody together and uh, get the, uh, the flowers planted and, and beautify those areas. I have one other thing that we need to add before we get into the questions and discussion and, and uh, approval, and that is brought to my attention that we need to set a public hearing on April 27th at 6 p.m. for the budget. Oh, yeah. Um, so if we can add that to your report. Yeah, or if you could. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a copy of that uh, um, for everybody, but is that on the cover of the sheet of the uh, budget? Okay. Hearing, uh, uh, if you want to, if we can do this either now or later, uh, be before the um, the twenty seventh of October. Not yeah. October. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're flying by this. Mm -hmm. uh, the twenty seventh of um, April. April. April, six o'clock here at City Hall. So the plan would be to have the study session with Mayor and Council the twentieth next Tuesday, and then come back in for the public hearing on the twenty seventh, and then we'll come back uh, to approve. The budget tentatively on the first meeting in uh, April or in May. God, I'm, I'm ready for a vacation. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we'll come back in the May first, uh, uh, the first meeting in May, and then uh, by charter you have to have it approved by May 30th. So we'll we will have um, as part of the administrator's report this evening. To, we are setting a public hearing on April 27th at 6 p.m. for budget hearing, and that will be included when we approve this. So now, are, does anyone have any questions or comments on the administrator's report? I was actually, I was just curious if there's ever a, I always want to call it CBGBs, but it's not CBGBs. It's okay. That's a punk rock <laughs> venue. CDBG, is there, have we ever not gotten a CD? Anyone that we have applied for? So, so CDBG has been around since about 1974. Okay. Um, and uh, we've been part of the Wayne County Consortium for as long as I can remember on that front. I, now I, my time only goes back to 98, but it was well before that time that they were getting uh, allocations. So uh, when they changed the allocation, before we used to get about $120,000 and we kind of could use it for what we, what we wanted to. And I come in with, say we're gonna use it for uh, administration, we're gonna use it for street improvements, we're gonna use it for park project, we're gonna use it for senior services, and it was pretty much gone. Um, so they changed the program because they didn't like how we were doing it. Uh, they, they wanted to get more money into some higher need areas, which was fine. When they changed the allocation, they allowed $20,000 for each community for public service. And, and I was told all 34 communities that are part of the consortium applied for the public service dollars. 
and that can be used to offset costs of senior services, transportation, things like that. Um, they also have a provision that you would get one, uh, once every five years, you could get a $100,000 project. Um, so the first year we applied and uh, for a couple of different, uh, I think we did ADA ramps in the Kennedy sub and we put, submitted for Palouche home to get an elevator and they put it in for 135, 135 was funded. The second year we put in for uh, Kennedy sub and I think uh, I may have done some ADA ramps as well. And we were funded the um, Kennedy Park at 183. Mm. And then this year we put in for um, the historical uh, museum for 104. We had um, gingerbread tot lot for 113. And I also submitted for the uh, bleachers, ADA bleacher improvements at the arena at 295. And we got the 104. So I, I think I, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not a big fan of the new process, but I can't complain because we've been you know, we've been pretty beneficial. We benefited from it for the tune of what uh, four hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. So plus the plus the sixty that we get on a regular basis. So three hundred twenty we've gotten in the three years. So, so what are we at four eighty in three years? I'm not going to be playing. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? The first round about Ellen Road. Yeah, the, the mayor's doing pretty good. I'm watching. I'm I'm looking at the email, so I, she's got she's got you covered. So, yeah. And everybody's aware that needs to be aware. So. Yeah, they they've definitely had some changes in there. They they've got uh, some staff changes that are. But is Wayne uh, Wayne County in in, in charge of Allen Road from Cross Road to Allen? Uh, no, uh, so Allen Road from Southfield to um, E Course uh, Roosevelt and Allen Road is 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 Allen Park. The intersection is is Wayne County, and then E Course from E Course to Pelham is is Allen Park. I know it sounds funny, but every time I turn right on Window Road to Allen Road, there's a big Bump on the road. I mean, there's a big hole there. Every time. Is it on Inglewood or is it on that? Who takes care of the intersection there? Either that, you got to get it filled up or something. Yeah, let me, let me, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll send a message to Tom when, when I sit yeah. back down to, to have him take a look at that area. You, there, there's, there's times where, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ask Tom, and, and or he's already on top of it, to send the guys out to uh, have them fill a pothole on Allen Road because it just makes sense. It, whether it's ours or not, it's our residents are going to hit it, you know, and they're going to damage their vehicle. That's the last, last thing you want to have. Every time I turn, I always think mud. <laughs> yep. I, I notice it when I turn off of, and it's the intersection that, that Tom's been, been harping on these guys for. It's the intersection right here at uh, E-Course. Uh, Roosevelt, mm -hmm. Allen Road, Kaufman, you've mentioned it numerous times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Tom Tom's has a really good relationship, and, you know, you, you keep pushing. You don't get to be careful. You don't push too hard. But he's got a good relationship. I'm hoping maybe this year we can get that one taken care of because that would make a big deal. I just noticed it last night. I was going to pick up some checks for, for the mayor to sign, and I, tur I turned off of, off of Roosevelt onto your course, and, and I got jarred. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm driving the truck, and I got jarred pretty good. So, so other than that, you did it's a team effort here. We got a great team of people to work with. So. Okay. If there's no further questions, can I have a motion? <coughs> excuse me to accept and file the uh, administrative motion by Lolly. Support. Support by Blevins. <coughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is carried. Thank you. Now we come to the public comment section on the agenda. Anyone from the public wishing to come up and speak may do so. You have four minutes. Simply give your name and the street on which you live. We do not want the address and keep your comments civil. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council. Years, boy, the years really flew. You guys really realize now what your job really entails. It's not as easy as you thought it was. Could you give your name and My street? name is Ray McGusson. I'm, I live on Quant. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Been a citizen for a long time. Been coming up to these these meetings for quite a while too. First of all, I want to thank the city, especially Mark Kibbe, for 
applying for that grant, the historical house really needs the money. So I want to thank them right there. I also want to thank every commissioner throughout this city, present and past, who have dedicated their time, their energy, put off special occasions to go ahead and to do what they do within the city. They do not get paid nothing, not one penny. All we get saying we did something for the city. So it feels good in our hearts. So I just want to thank them all. It's not, it's not easy. Some can be very, very tough. If you guys think you guys get attacked, some of us commissioners get attacked. So since we're under the rules of decorum, and I also know that none of you are supposed to be attacked for anything you do personally. I want you guys to realize that. To any citizen that's, that's sitting out there, understand that too. The only thing we can do is come up and say, do your job. That's all we can do. Your job's not easy. Some of you, it's, not, it's getting tougher. So I want to thank you all for what you're doing and for the time you put in. But remember one thing. You are elected to represent us, which is very important. OK? You guys run the city indirectly. Some other ones are, and they do run, help to run the city. But without you, the city is going to need, you know, does not get ran. You have to authorize everything. I like to ask a couple questions. Number one is, Kilfoyle Drain this, that runs along Midway out there by Reek, where the trees are falling in, in, into, the, into that creek area, which I totally understand and heard. And I'm not going to make no nothing right now. I would like to talk to some after the meeting. But someone went over there and cut the trees down and dropped them right into that creek about approximately two years ago. They weren't small trees. They, weren't even, they were quite large trees. That, all that does is it's make it harder for you. Another thing I'm going to ask is, when is the life support system going to be taken off of our library? Now you're probably wondering, what is he talking about? <laughs> oh, no, we know. It's all the Sorry. white tubes. It oh, looks yeah. terrible. A number of our citizens have even asked me. They stopped in front of my house and said, hey, can you go up there and say something, Ray? I, I said, you all guys, I wish you would go up there and say something, too. My, my understanding right now, it's going to cost, I don't know how much money to take it off life support. So I would like to go ahead, and that, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Thank you very much right, for your, your time. Time's up. We've noted that. It's been part of lots of discussions. Bye. <laughs> and, I know my time's up, yep. so I want to thank you very much for allowing me as a citizen to come up here and talk. Have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you, Rick. Thank, thank you, Rick. Got a mind of its own. Do we have any others who want to come up? If not, then we'll close the public comment section. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Tonight's consent agenda consists of Purchasing actions, claims, and accounts in the payroll report, and finance actions, which are the finance overview, budget to actual report, balance sheet, and cash flow. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lloyd. Second. Second by Mr. Valerius. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Move on to resolutions. 
Resolution one is to consider waiving the city bid process as there is no economic benefit to bid the asphalt repaving of the community center parking lot and authorize the city to accept the proposal from Al's asphalt paving for $46,679. Funds for this project are available in Parks and Recreation Building Maintenance. I'll make the motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Lally. Support. Right. Supported by Mr. Blevins. Questions or discussion? We kind of covered that in the work session, but if anybody wants to further comment. If not, has to be done. we'll take the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Motion is carried. <clears throat> resolution two. It's actually a two-parter. The resolution to approve the DDA use of the city parking lot behind the old theater to hold a COVID-free drive-in trivia from July 8th until August 26th, and approve music in the streets on Allen Road for the following dates, June 9 and 23, 20, <laughs> we start again, June 9 and 23, July 7 and 21, August 4 and 18, and September 8 and 22. Um, the, um, Drive-in trivia was started last year and was very successful. Uh, anybody who drove by uh, could see that it was well spaced out and, 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 and well attended. The um, music in the streets um, is going to take advantage of our music showmobile and uh, bring people downtown and help out our businesses even further. Um, the site plans were reviewed by our police and fire departments. And for those who, um, might have looked at the uh, agenda uh, and the packet online. Uh, the site plan that has been selected by the DDA is site plan number two. There were two site plans that were included in the package, but they indicated that they are, um, that they've settled on site plan number two. So any, may I have a motion, please? Motion, Mayor. Motion by Mr. Schlack. Second. Second by Mr. Valerius. Questions or discussion? I do have one question. Since we have this uh, uh, trivia in the park, are they going to have like beverages or food to hand out or, I mean, sell, sell or anything like that? Councilman, I believe for the uh, music in the park uh, program, there will not be any uh, beverages okay. at that point. Be bring your own. And just because of the, the issue of um, cash handling and, 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 and not trying to avoid that. And anything you know, else with handling the, the, the food material. Um, I think the purpose of the uh, music in the streets uh, with the DDA is that the businesses would be able to benefit from that, um, be able to maybe take uh, buy so something they, and then go out and, and listen to the music. So they could order food from outside and let them deliver it to your truck. Correct, okay. correct. yeah. That, that's what I think the intent that's, was. On that. I was wondering. Yeah. That's all. Thank uh, you. On the drive in trivia, I think last year that's what they did. I'm not sure how much participation, I think. Jennifer had indicated that they were encouraging businesses to do um, drop off yeah, where, where people who were participating could call in and then it could be delivered and they would have paid for it, I think. Right. With their did, I think, did she do any discount if, the, if you would approve the, with the receipt that you bought food? Mm -hmm. at a, at a place, I think I mean, she did. Like $10 yeah. Yeah. Off, so you get yeah. a couple dollars. She'll it provide helps. details on that, but it was very well thought out. And, and again, it was to, to get people, give them something to do and um, some entertainment and also support the local businesses and really you know good. and and again while we're talking on that subject we've got the downtown dollars that I, I need to get in point. and take a look at that because you can get discounts at a lot of and it's not just food establishments um, downtown so take advantage of that Jennifer's done a great job of getting the information out that's available on the grants and uh, for the for the employees for their uh, for the businesses getting that information out to her DDA businesses uh, I see those come across and she has done a great job in getting that information to those people. Yeah, that, that would Hopefully help all the businesses there, yeah. too, the bars and all that. And yeah, that's a great opportunity. That's great. To, that's to, a good idea. Uh, you know, the, the couple of those uh, establishments do have outdoor seating, so they'll be able to benefit as well by having people sit there. Uh, but if you want to grab, you know, uh, some uh, chicken wings or chicken tenders from, uh, you know. Morals. 
uh, uh, more of them. I guess you can do the, the, the tips or something like that. But you know, uh, um, Tim O'Malley's. Tim O'Malley's. Trino O'Malley's. Trino's Trino got O'Malley's. great, uh, great food there. And I think that's kind of the intent is that you you know could grab some stuff and go back to wherever you're sitting or your vehicle and go from that point. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? <clears throat> we have a motion by um, by um, Mr. Schlack and a second by Mr. Valerius. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Resolution is passed. Resolution three, to concur with the assessing department's recommendation to waive the penalty for failure to file the property transfer affidavit following a transfer of ownership. May I have a motion? I make a motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. Questions or comments? Uh, Madam Mayor, you talked about this quite a bit during the uh, study session. Could you maybe extend to the community about what your findings were on that? Right. Our, um, our assessing department has indicated that they wish to put this before us because of the fact that many a new homeowner is told by their real estate agent um, or their mortgage lender at the time of closing that um, that agent is going to file the uh, property transfer affidavit for them. On occasion, this does not happen, which results in the new property owner being penalized by having to pay a $5 a day fine, and that can become rather extensive. Um, we have apparently had incidents where a new homeowner was totally unaware of this not being done on their behalf, who came in and owed us, found that they owed us $200, and it, it was very stressful for them. Um, this is not going to have, waiving these fees does not have a negative impact on the city. As a matter of fact, um, I think it makes us a more welcoming community to understand that oftentimes people on good faith assume that things are being done that they have been told are going to be done. Oftentimes a new homeowner does not discover this oversight until they receive their property tax bill and find that they are not registered as homestead property at which time they come in to correct it. Um, in talking again with our deputy assessor and the assessor for uh, our city and other cities, um, many cities just normally don't charge a fee. And because of their recommendation and the fact that um, we wanna make sure that our new residents uh, are fully appreciative of us and our, and our community, I uh, strongly urge us to uh, adopt this. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion? If not, we can take the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Now we're going to come to the council comments, but as I gave a heads up, um, because I usually get stuck last with very little to say and just That's seem like thing. I'm repeating, I'm, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. Um, I'm going to make a very brief statement at this point, but then I am going to do my normal closing comments after we go through. But um, I had one thing in particular that I wanted to comment on. And so um, this is mine. Um, in going through the Allen Park Today publication that we just received, and usually I let these things sit around for weeks and I don't read them timely, but I'm making an effort to do better. On one of the pages there was a uh, full page 2021 Founders Day reward recipients that was put out by the Allen Park PTA PTSA Council um, is a reminder of the sus substantial role that our PTA PTSA plays in supporting parental involvement working on behalf of all children and families. It is a time to reflect and take pride in the many accomplishments throughout Allen Park Public Schools <clears throat> and recognize exemplary staff, volunteers, community members, and local businesses. A celebration to highlight Founders Day honorees from all the Allen Park Public Schools happened in an online reception on February 24, 2021. And then it said, please join us in recognizing this year's honorees. And so I want to recognize one of them for Allen Park High School outstanding educator, Dan Lloyd. Thank you. 
I, I encourage everyone to read through that page. They cover everyone from head custodian and people that deserve to be recognized for the contribution they make every single day to our school system and to making sure that it functions the way it should. But hats off to our educators because I can tell you this, there are many people out there who will take pot shots at teachers, but I can guarantee you that they would not survive one week in a classroom. So, and now we will go on with our normal routine and tonight's first speaker is Dan Lloyd. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, that means a great deal. Uh, Dad always said, if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day. And I am uh, very fortunate um, that I don't have to go to work. Right, I get to go to school and do the thing that I love. Um, and so I'm very fortunate to be able to do it. So thank you so much, Mayor. It's funny, I, I got in here today and I said, oh, I don't have anything to say in council comments. Now I have a ton of things to say. So I just want to, since being first up, I want to um, address, excuse me, address, uh, <clears throat> sorry, still getting used to mic placement here, uh, Mr. McGuffin's uh, statements. Um, I, I can't speak to the drain at Midway and Reek other than to say that I'm sure that uh, Mr. Kibbe has already noted it and has probably sent it over to uh, Tom Murray and I'm sure that they'll take a look at it and, and address it um, quickly because I know that we have a great staff here. Um, to the library, so that that is our HVAC system. Um, and uh, that's that's actually, I, it's funny that you should ask that Mr. McGuston because I, I, ha I have, uh, my, this is my notebook that I have from the very beginning. This goes back to 1126, uh, 19 is when we decided to do this. And when we were in that situation, um, we were faced with an emergency. We had a, um, a boiler that I'm pretty sure was original to that. And we were essentially in a situation where the boiler could have gone. I, I asked this question <laughs> and I wrote it down in my notes. I said, um, is, there something, is there something wrong with it? And the note I have underneath is any day. Question mark. And so it, it literally, it, we were in a situation where that boiler could have gone at any day. And um, if you know anything about boilers, like I don't, um, they're like, you have to kind of like, it's, there's like tricks to them. Like, you know, and you have people that know what you're doing to them. And those few boiler makers that are still out there, I'm sure, you know, make very good money with the ones that they have. But we were in a situation where we needed to replace the HVAC system because facing winter, if that system blew, all right, our pipes freeze. Now we're not looking at a HVAC system. We're looking at a, a complete gutting and not even just that, a loss of our collection at the library, which would have been a, a, a tragedy, it would been a very big, very big problem. Um, the other problem that we face with this, and again, you know, going into the history of it, is because it is an older building, um, most HVAC systems, you would put them on the roof. You would put them like on the roof I'm sure as many of you have seen. Air uh, um, yeah, air conditioning units, things like that. However, because it was so old, we would have to have basically of, like reinforced structurally the building to in, be able to put an HVAC system. So it would have been exponentially more money. And again, facing an emergency situation. All that being said, unfortunately, I, and, I, and I feel you, I live on Aster, I work at the high school. I drive past it every single day. And I look over at it, and I, I just like, oh. I, I, so I, I definitely understand um, it does not, it, it is not, is, um, as um, Councilwoman Syke has pointed out many times, it is a beautiful building, a beautiful modern design building. Mid-century. In, in Mid-century, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, with, and, and now it has these things coming out of it. But, but this is something that we have spent a lot of time on in council so don't don't think that this is not a concern that we have not heard or we do not share with the public um, because this is something that we have we have invested a lot of time on and we're going to get a solution um, i don't know what that solution is yet we've talked about a lot of things so the, the various ideas are are getting something to cover it up um, talking about um, like redoing the glass windows so right now that and which is leading into a whole nother kind of slippery slope here, but we will have a solution um, on that on that problem. Um, so it, it, I, I can't promise that it's going to be next month or the month after that. Um, but I just want to assure again, Mr. McGuston, thank you so much for coming up and speaking to us. I appreciate you um, for all of your commitment to this city government. 
Um, I, I don't know if I'm just loud. I keep hearing my reverb. I'm going to get farther from my mic. You go loud. I know. <laughs> Everybody can hear me at home. Teacher voice. I know, I know. Uh, so th we, we, um, it's, it's, we share your concern, and we are definitely working on it. So thank you very much for bringing it to us, um, and we will make sure that we do that. Finally, I, I have to say this. Um, in my very little free time, one of my decompressors is I play a computer game. It's called SimCity. It's where you make these virtual cities. You, you put the things. You have to provide services, roads, utilities, all these things. And I'll tell you, it is so difficult in that game to balance your budget. You end up losing money all the time. And honestly, that's I've, end, I've abandoned many cities in my virtual because I've, not, I've like, well, I've just took out another $3 million loan. And I said, so I, in my video game, virtual running of cities, I struggle to balance the budget. So I very, 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 very much appreciate uh, Miss Works um, and all the work that she puts into it. Um, I know that we, this is for us, this work is just starting, um, handing it over to us. That's our work is just starting with the budget. But I know that this has been something that she has invested um, hours and hours into. And um, I appreciate her diligence um, for, for us to make our job as easy as possible to go through this. I appreciate the color coordinating with the ring binder. That's very nice. And um, all the work that she does for the city of Allen Park. So, so thank you so much. And I yield. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have much to say this tonight, except for this week I went and got my second shot. Everything came out fine. And I would encourage you, if you can, and you're so willing, to go out and get your shot when it's available for you for the, I mean, the vaccine for COVID. And, uh, you know, together we can take and do um, great things together. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I yield my time. <coughs> Matthew. Hopefully this is working. I'll try not to do the reverb and talk as loud in my teacher voice as Mr. Teacher Lloyd. Teacher voices. Oh, they're loud. <coughs> Uh, I just would like to thank Mr. McGuck McGusson too for uh, you know your your commitment to the city uh, and you know uh, stressing. Uh, the recognition of the job that the commissioners do, uh, you know, they, they are totally voluntary and they do put a lot of time and effort into uh, what they do for uh, the city of Allen Park and their work and efforts are very much appreciated, uh, as are yours. And uh, we appreciate you coming up and acknowledging all that and uh, also letting us know, uh, you know, again, to be reminded uh, what our jobs are to the citizens of Allen Park, so I appreciate that. Uh, Amanda, uh, echo Mr. Lloyd's uh, sentiments towards you and all your hard work and efforts on the budget. Uh, you know, I, looking at it, I just, you know, I just can't wait to get home and just start <laughs> reading it. Uh, all, everything that I had planned for the evening now has just taken a, a, a backseat to, uh, to this gem. So I appreciate uh, your time and efforts too. Uh, I'd like to continue on a positive note. I just would ask, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, it just seems like uh, so often during these times, uh, you know, there are instances that that come up that, uh, you know, cause disruptions in our lives and, and things to kind of take a backseat to everything else. So uh, I'll just share with you uh, today uh, at 11.25 a.m., my dad's, one of my dad's one remaining or two remaining brothers passed away. Uh, he was suffering from COVID. Uh, he did get his first vaccination shot and a week later he tested positive. Uh, so he joins my Aunt Bev, uh, my dad's older brother, my dad's older sister, and my dad's parents uh, in paradise. Uh, I pray for his sons, uh, my two cousins. Uh, he has two boys, Walt and Kevin, uh, and everyone that knew my uncle. Uh, he was a great brother to my dad uh, who's disabled and would take him out for lunches, take him out to dinners and take him up to Elizabeth Park to watch ships and the shores. Uh, and unfortunately, today was also his 80th birthday. So he passed on the day he was born. So uh, just keep uh, my family, his family uh, in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, I yield my time. Thank you.
Gary. Well, I want to start off by saying, given my condolences to Councilman Valaris uh, with the passing of your uncle, I do have uh, something in common to share there, where my grandfather, which I named after Gary Walter Schlack, actually died on his birthday. So even though it's tragic to uh, think of the death, it's always been uh, comforting to know when I talk to my family that he died on his birthday. It's kind of a remarkable fact. I also want to say I'm glad to be back. I wasn't here last council meeting as uh, my fellow council uh, addressed that I was at the hospital, not for myself, but for the birth of my second son. So I'm now fortunate enough to be a father of two boys. Please pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to acknowledge all the hard work that our city has done with preparing for the budget and everything that comes with that, and also definitely acknowledge the hard work that every commissioner has done for our city. We wouldn't be the city we are today if it weren't for the commissioners and the, all the hard work they put in. It, without a doubt in anyone's mind up here. Uh, I also wanted to say that before the last meeting, I was fortunate enough to attend of one of my duties that I was assigned to attend, SEMCOG General Assembly. And if you don't know what SEMCOG is, SEMCOG is the Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments. And I was able to dialogue with several members of various communities and learn what they're doing and tell them what we're doing here and kind of gather ideas that I hope to share with my uh, here and bring that together. And other than that, uh, I want to echo uh, Councilwoman Sykes' words that if you have the opportunity to get vaccinated, please, please, please get vaccinated. The only way we get over this hump is to get vaccinated. I kind of think of Smokey the Bear when I think of that and say like only you can prevent forest fires and only like we can prevent uh, this from going continuing onward. And other than that, I will see everyone in two weeks and wish everyone the best of luck. And I yield my time. Thank you. Mr. Blevins. Let's let's also pray for Bridget as well. <laughs> um, first off, uh, uh, to those who are celebrating, happy Ramadan, the first day for the uh, this month. Um, also, um, it's April is for uh, autism awareness, and I'm also wearing a puzzle bow tie for the that awareness. Um, please make sure you keep on supporting local businesses um if for some reason if they're like well why is this closed and all it's it's it, it may be due to covid but it also might be they can't staff those shifts and stuff so please be patient and um but please if you, anyway make sure you keep supporting our local businesses um uh, also again if you haven't seen the new ap uh, today magazine, we do, they, the city hall does have extras here if you want to pick one up if didn't receive one. Um, also, uh, please uh, like uh, make sure you get vaccinated um, if you get a chance. Let me. T uh, I went to Dearborn uh, when I got my shot and very organized, very wonderful, and the firefighters, police officers, everyone that is getting everyone their shots did a remarkable job and i want to applaud them for doing what they do every day um especially there and uh also i want to say a uh, happy birthday to my mother her uh tomorrow is her birthday and just um just make sure uh uh just keep on when again going to stores and Everywhere. just please respect others and just uh you never know what they're going through especially during a pandemic and um i try it's like this try to make bring fun to government and um i want to thank um ray for coming up and speaking to us and again like he said that he wished like said that if only other people came to speak about these types of situations and stuff and i encourage all residents, please come up here 
and speak for us so that we can be aware of different situations and uh, so that we can take care of city businesses. And with that, uh, thank you again for coming out and God bless and I yield. Thank you, Joe. Mike, did you have anything you wanted to communicate? That's okay. You, you can forget about me. It's all right. I'm sorry. You know why? You're at the top of the list. Oh, yeah? And I was going down. So oh, that's all right. I'm sorry, Colleen. <laughs> Well, anyway, no, I, I'll forgive you, Mayor, no <laughs> Thank problem. You. Thank you. Uh, first of all, my condolence goes to Matthew and his family for his uncle's passing away. I, I want to thank Ray for coming up here. I know Ray for uh, quite a few years. When he has to say something, he says it, and that's it. And something's got to get done. And we are working on it. I, I, just like uh, Councilman Lloyd said, we've been, we've, we haven't been shutting down on that building. We're still working on it. There's a lot of things that need to be done yet before we could take care of the, the sore pipes or whatever you want to call it, the dinosaur. Uh, life support. Okay, so what? Life, life support. support. Life support. Okay, I'm sorry. I, uh, no. Geez, I have a lot of things to say. I'd be remiss if I don't say something about the American Legion tonight. I, uh, we held a a uh, food drive for the veterans, for the uh, veterans in Allen Park and surrounding areas, and those less fortunate. Cleaners and donated 500 boxes of 40 pounds food with boxes, and we delivered all that in, uh, from 10 to 11 to one. That was open to anybody that needed it. We didn't ask what it for. Why do you need it? None of that. We just came in, we give them a box, sometimes we give them two. And we got rid of it thanks to the help of John Perry. And that includes with the Veterans Affairs Rehab uh, Community Chairman, Don, Don Howard, and the, uh, the, the state of police, five police officers from the state of Michigan came over and helped out delivering the food. Uh, the veterans of from uh, Fort from Southgate Veterans Court, Allen Park Police Chief uh, uh, Chris Egan was there, and we had the Allen Park Lieutenant or detective that does the uh, 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 police in the block of cop on the block. He came over and did some uh, video on Facebook, and we got more people to come. It was very nice, and we got rid of all of it. And, uh, and all the 12 members of the American Legion and the commander of the Allen, uh, Allen Park American Legion, Dave Babbage. Hmm. It was a very nice day, uh, and uh, we delivered all the food. There's a couple things coming up, if I don't mind, Mayor, I'd like to announce it. Memorial Day, since you guys didn't say nothing, I figured, well, I'll say it. Uh, Memorial Day is, is on, on the 22nd of May. It'll be at the vet, old Veteran Memorial Hospital, the monument. And I'm pretty sure Pat Hawkins, he's got everything together, so that's Mark Kibbe. And the VFW, the American Legion, the uh, honor guards from the police department, it'll be a nice little ceremony. If you haven't been to one, make plan of being there. It's very nice. We have going to be a 21-gun salute and uh, it'll be very nice. There's another ceremony coming up at the Family Park at the Knights of Columbus. And 9-11, at September the 11th, we're gonna celebrate the 9-11 uh, uh, Memorial Day, uh, Memorial, whatever, Remembering Day. And it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, I'd like to, all the council people to be there, the mayor especially, and the, the police, the honor guards from the police department, the VFW, American Legion, and, and all the dignitaries. And there'll be do, uh, the $20 donation, there'll be music in, the, it'll be music in there and everything. So it'll be, it'll be a wonderful thing, food and everything else. It'll be right across the park, across the Knights of Columbus. So the city's moving on. It's moving on. Don't be afraid. Go out there, like uh, Pam said, get your shots and make sure your, your hands clean, 
stay six away and wear your mask. That's all I have. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I want to get on the microphone. So, um, but right down by my dad's house, by the Sexton Kinfoil, they did the exact same thing. They cut it. Two people came, cut down some trees, left them right across the water. Ugh. It's bad. Um, <clears throat> Also, I want to remind everybody on uh, May 4th, we do have the Allen Park Public School bond proposal. We will be consolidating it into the community center. So if you went there in November, it's not going to be the exact same setup. You ju just got to look for your precinct number on the table, okay? Um, it's as easy as going to mi.gov slash vote on your smartphone and knowing exactly where to vote. And we will have stuff posted so you'll know before you even make it down to the gymnasium where it's at. Um, also, if you, if you think, if you're on the permanent absentee list, and you think that means you permanently get a ballot for every election, that's kind of a misnomer. You are eligible, but being on the permanent absentee list, you are just permanently going to get the applications. So if you, if you are on the list and wonder, why haven't I gotten my ballot yet, please look for your application. Because people are starting to call, said, I never got my ballot. And well, you never send us back the application. So just remember, for every election, you do have to send in that application. Um, if you threw it away or, dis or set it somewhere, just call the clerk's office or download one off the internet. We'll get you a new one. Again, just get out May 4th, vote. It is directly affects everyone in the Allen Park Public School District. Thank you all for coming out. God bless you and good night. Thank you, Mike. Some good reminders there. So I'll try and make this brief. Um, we, uh, we put out a council meeting packet. It goes online. I hope everyone takes the time to read uh, a lot of the reports that are included from our departments and other functions because they provide a lot of useful information related to the work that's being performed and the programs that are available um, and um, things that we should really be proud of. Uh, our DDA has been doing, as we mentioned before, an outstanding job during this pandemic. And they have been recognized by American Express, which selected them as a third place winner of the American Express Shop Small Order In Help Out um, Innovation Challenge. And uh, their report also includes uh, information on planned 2021 events, among them being the early opening of the farmer's market this Friday, April 16th, which also appeared in the News Herald. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, again, a lot of the uh, <clears throat> reports, particularly from our fire department, um, provide a, a broad range of information uh, and reinforce the teamwork that continues to take place, particularly during these times of the pandemic where I have been working with the Dearborn Police uh, Fire Department and ensuring that um, the vaccination centers are staffed. And I repeat again, they made sure that everyone in our senior housing in Allen Park was covered for vaccinations. They did it in-house. Um, again, from these reports, you will find that even though our library's normal way of doing business has been impacted by COVID, we should be impressed by what has been accomplished and the programs they continue to provide to their customers and our residents. Um, and here I had made a note because usually all these things get covered before they get to me, but this had not been mentioned, is that our Allen Park High School cheer team, uh, once again, are the state champions and um, I have that newspaper article in my office, but I am hopeful that before the semester ends this year, uh, we're able to bring the team and their coaches into uh, one of our council meetings and give them uh, the recognition they so richly deserve. A lot of hard work goes into that. Um, 
Cheer was not my thing. I preferred competitive sports. Um, didn't think cheer was competitive, but I've learned otherwise. And uh, the physical uh, work that goes into that is to be much admired. Um, I think um, I mentioned uh, our commissioners coming up. And again, um, we in the past have had uh, commissioner appreciation dinners. And in fact, we, we had one all ready to go uh, last year when uh, COVID put a damper on that. Um, but anyone who is sitting on this council and or works in City Hall knows how I feel about the commissions and the value uh, they provide to this city um, and the work that they do. And uh, when we are able, we will have an appreciation dinner so that individuals know that. Uh, we recognize the time and effort that, that they're putting in and uh, and what they what they do for this community. Um, so it has always been my goal to make sure that they are recognized. And um, when we appoint new members or reappoint people, um, want to again bring them into council meetings so that their fellow community members are aware of who they are and what they are doing. And by doing that, also encourage others to participate because I know that volunteers will tell you they they give a lot of time and effort. Um, but they also get a lot of satisfaction from knowing that they're doing something really good for their community. Um, it's, it's critical. So with that, I think I've covered everything I needed to cover. I thank you all very much for being here. Um, please pay attention to what's going on in your community. Watch out for your neighbors. Um, I will reinforce, please do get vaccinated. Uh, if you know of a neighbor who is having difficulty getting somewhere for a vaccination, see what you can do to help out. Um, they're available. We continually get emails and postings on our, our city web site and our Facebook pages. Um, they're waiting for you at the Dearborn Center. Take advantage. Thank you all very much. And with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Mr. Blevins. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 7.10 p.m.